Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm the OP Jellicent and we are team building for the ICBA Conference Finals up against Dominic Milano and his New Jersey Nagana Devils. We actually managed to beat this team all the way back in week number four, so we're hoping to do the same right now. Whoever wins this game actually moves on to the ICBA Season 3 Finals to battle either Johnny GB or Omega Jolteon, so that'll definitely be very exciting. The last time I kind of brought a unique idea with the whole Trick Room thing, but Pretty much Scarf Kieran Black with Outrage ended up playing through his entire team after he sacked off his Jirachi to my Electrath, so you'll see that we're still bringing the Trick Room this week as our main win condition, but we're actually trying to lure the Jirachi with some of our Pokemon this week, so hopefully that can work out. But uh, before we go over my team, of course, you can go ahead and check out the New Jersey Nugget of Devils roster over on the right of your screen. We'll go through each of his Pokemon one by one, then we will go through my team and get my thoughts on the matchup as a whole. So let's go ahead and get started with Dominic's roster. Okay, so the first Pokemon that Dom has right here is the Darkrai, which was his Ultra Tier pick, and last time we didn't really get to see Darkrai do much, it ended up going down to Kieran Black's Outrage in one hit, which was definitely very cool, but I think the best set to bring versus me is either Choice Scarf or the... Nasty Plot set with three attacks. I could see something like Nasty Plot with Phytanium Z, with Focus Blast, Dark Pulse, and then maybe Thunderbolt, or I think it gets Energy Ball too, to just be sure that it can hit Greninja without having to risk accuracy, of course. So definitely think that might be the route he goes. I say Choice Scarf too, because he saw that I've been really enjoying using Rock Polish Necrozma these past few weeks, and he might want to try to speed creep that with a Choice Scarf Dark Rye, of course, which will outspeed me after one Rock Polish. So that's definitely something we have to keep in mind. I'm not bringing Rock Polish Necrozma, so honestly, if it brings the Choice Scarf set, I'll probably be happier, because I'm going for a Trick Room win anyway, but yeah, pretty much that's all there is to say about Dark Rare there. Pretty one-dimensional, but definitely a very scary Pokemon. He has the Jirachi, which is the Pokemon that I'm trying to lure this week. It's his one fairy resist on his team, unless you count Flareon, of course, but Flareon is not taking player offs, so... Pretty much, if we can get rid of Jirachi and then get Mega Mawile in under a Trick Room, we can definitely have some cleaning potential right there, but... Other than that, it could be a Choice Scarf user, it does get access to Stealth Rocks. Serene Grace Iron Head flinching is definitely something we want to try to avoid, so definitely prep for Jirachi very well this week, as you guys will see. But next up here, he has the Terrakion, which is his second Z-move user. I did forget to mention that Darkrai can use Z-moves, although I did mention Phytanium Z. But yeah, Terrakion can definitely run some sort of a Rock Polish yet right here, maybe even Swords Dance too, but I think it, the Rock Polish Cleaner definitely makes the most sense. It is definitely threatened by Greninja's Water Shuriken, which is definitely very great. If we can get that thing down to like 60% between hazards and maybe some momentum moves, we can actually knock that out with Water Shuriken from Expert Belt Greninja, which would be very beneficial for us right here. So hopefully that can work out. I could see him also running some sort of like Paso Berry set, just because that can obviously take on my Water Shuriken better, but I think the way that works actually is the first Water Shuriken's damage is halved, but then all the hits after that might be... Uh, doing the normal amount of damage. I'll have to double check on those mechanics, but if it is all of the hits are halved, then I am definitely couldn't expect that, of course, but uh, other than that, a Choice Scarf set could come. I think he's either going to Scarf Terrakion or Darkrai, because last time he did not Scarf a Pokemon that was faster than Kieran Black, and Kieran Black just ended up doing the finest of work, so I think it'll be Scarf Terrakion and then Nasty Plot Darkrai for sure. Next up here, he has the Diggersby, which Quick Attack Pressure is definitely very threatening to me. It can also Earthquake my Mega Mawile and take a Sucker Punch. If we can switch in Mega Mawile and then pivot out, we can actually take the normal type attack and then switch into something else on the Earthquake, which could be a cool option too. And uh, other than that, it's also threatened by the Greninja's Water Shirk, and very similarly to the Terrakion, takes it even worse, so I think we only need to get it down to 75%. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and check those uh, the mechanics of the whole Paso Berry thing with Water Shirk, and he has the Shaman right here, which I don't think Scarf Shaman's gonna come, just because it, although it does outspeed Karen Black, Dazzling Gleam's only doing like 60%, so not too stressed out about that, and it's completely blown back by stuff like Entei. Obviously, if he does run like a max speed set, he can outspeed me because Entei is forced to go with an adamant nature, and it can run like Earth Power, but other than that, like Life Orb Greninja just blows back back with Ice Beam, same thing with Expert Belt Greninja, so I'm not really sure what route he'll go with Shaman. Would not be surprised if he just kept it off the board entirely. Next up here, he has the Vaporeon, which I think Vaporeon comes this time. Last time, Entei, I don't think hit the field, but it was definitely a very big threat to his team, as, we, as you probably noticed from preview, so I think Vaporeon comes this time just to help better take that on. And uh, you'll see that I'm actually running a bit of tech on my Entei this week. I wouldn't really call it tech because there was really no other option than running Toxic on my Entei to try to catch that. So yeah, that's the whole thing with Vaporeon right there, really one-dimensional Mon. It can run Roar too, which could be a bit annoying because I do have a few substitute Pokemon this week. And I believe Roar actually phases you out even if you're behind a substitute, unlike Dragon Tail. So 
Now that's definitely something we have to keep in mind. He has the Aromatisse right here, not worried about Aromatisse at all, blown back by Mega Mawile. Karen Black can run Iron Head if he's expecting that, blown back by Choice Bandente, and Greninja can run Gunk Shot too if he's expecting that as well. So don't expect Aromatisse to come. If it does, it'll probably just be some, some sort of Wish Passer, I'm not really expecting a Calm Mindset. Next up here, he has the Kecleon, which pretty on Kecleon is actually kind of annoying. Can definitely run something like Shadow Sneak for nice priority. Kind of a niche pick right there. Can take on any sort of normal type moves. And it does also have a really good spit F stat. So I could see some sort of Assault Fest working out. But a lot of my Pokemon are primarily physical attackers. Such as Kieran Black, Entei, Mega Mawile, Flagon, and even Greninja can hit on the physical side. So I don't think he'll bring Kecleon. Same thing with Rotom. Don't think that's coming just because Entei actually can outspeed that if we go with max speed. Actually, the regular Rotom might actually be faster. I'll have to double check on that too. With the whole speed tiers, but other than that, Mega Mawile Sucker Punch, really threatening to that. Kieran Black blows it back with Dragon Claw Greninja, obviously blows that back too. If it does come, I think it'll be a Choice Scarf set. Definitely have to be careful about like Will O Wisp, but really not expecting too much else. He has the Flare right here, which has a really high attack stat. I think it's like 130, but it just it's just too slow to bring in this matchup right here. Like I have plenty of good resists. Kieran Black takes a hit. And take and take a hit. Greninja blows that back with Water Shuriken slash any sort of Water Stab. And even Dark Stab is just going to blow that back. So really not too worried about Flareon. And then finally, Mega Pidgeot right here. Which I actually thankfully outspeed with my Greninja by one base point. Which you'll see that I'm definitely trying to take advantage of this week. And uh, other than that, just hits hard with Hurricane. Can run Heat Wave for my Mega Mobile, of course. And it is also one of his two defibers, that and Rotom. So if he is expecting Sticky Webs to come, that would be one of his best options to remove Sticky Webs, just because alongside Rotom, both of those defibers are immune to the Sticky Webs, of course. So that's definitely a good option for him. And yeah, that's Dom's roster, and let's go ahead and get into my team. Okay, so the first Pokemon we have right here is Domino Arcarim Black, which is running a really unique spread, as you guys can see right here. Substitute with three attacks, all physical attacks, of course, with the Ghost EMZ. And as I did say, I'm trying to lure that Jirachi into a false sense of security against Karim right here. And that way, unless he's running Fizz Def Jirachi, which would make no sense because Entei blows it back anyway, and Greninja's Dark Pulse will just plow through that thing if it's not Spit F, he's going to get O-Code by Ghost EMZ Shadow Claw. So, really not expecting uh, Fizz Def Jirachi, and we can definitely put in the work with this thing. The idea is... I bring it in on something that threatens out, say like Digger's B, Mega Pidgeot, I can bluff the Scarf on. I sub up as he switches in Jirachi to take any sort of Dragon type attack, Earth Power, or even Fusion Bolt. And then I hit that thing with the Ghost EMZ and knock it out. Even if he breaks my substitute, he can't flinch me while I'm behind it, so we are guaranteed the Ghost EMZ going off. Really not expecting Wish Protect to Jirachi, so even if he protects on my Z move, which is very unlikely, Shadow Clock can still 2 hit KO that thing, and it also has a high crit ratio, which is really nice to consider as well. But pretty much the main idea here is to lure that Jirachi with the Ghost EMZ, but we also have nice other coverage right here with the Dragon Claw. Pretty much hits the majority of his team. Pretty much everything except for Vaporeon and Mega Pidgeot I'm going to be equipping Dragon Claw against. And then we have Fusion Bolt for those two Pokemon, because Fusion Bolt does 2-hit KO Vaporeon, even if it is Wakan Berry, and then... It also knocks out the Mega Pidgeot in one hit, which is definitely very cool. So hopefully this Ghost EMZ can lure out, lure can work out, get rid of that one Fairy Resist, and then go to work with Mega Mawile, which I will go over later. But for now, let's go ahead and move on to our Greninja. Okay, next up here we have Taco, our Expert Belt Greninja, which pretty much had to be on the team this week, just for that Water Shuriken pressure, of course, because we do need that pressure for the Terrakion and Diggersby. As I did say when going over them, if you can weaken them to about 60-70%, and then we get the average hits of three water shurikens, which I'm pretty not, I'm not very consistent with that. You can go ahead and knock those out. Usually I got either five or two, so hopefully that works out for the better of us this time. But other than that, we have Ice Beam, which knocks out Mega Pidgeot after Stealth Rocks. Definitely very cool right there. You'll see that I do have a Stealth Rocker on this team when I go over my later Pokemon. But then we also have Dark Pulse right there, just for general stab, can break their Jirachi. Kind of expecting Colderberry Jirachi, but after we break that thing, we do have several Dark Attacks on this team, actually. We can go ahead and put in the work with the Dark Pulse right there. And then Spikes, just a nice Spike stacking. I feel like he might pivot into the Vaporeon on this Pokemon. And I do just want to try to Hazard stack him if it does come to it. Because Vaporeon is not really going to be doing, doing much to me without, like, it's just going to be scalding me or maybe roaring me out. And we can go ahead and just stack Spikes on that thing, which is really nice. And then when he brings in Mega Pidgeot to try to defog, we do outspeed it by one point and can Ice Beam that thing right out of there, which is really good for me. And the Spikes can definitely play a big role in guaranteeing that my Shadow Claw the Z-move knocks out the Jirachi and just pivot, it pretty much throws out his entire team for my Mega Mowels player off because I do need a bit of damage on Vaporeon for that player off to Oko. 
definitely something to consider right there. But yeah, that's our Greninja this week. Let's go ahead and move on to our Entei. Third Mon we got right here is Shiny, our Choice Band Entei, which is definitely pretty much too good not to bring pretty much because the experience through pressure is really nice. After any sort of attack from anything on our team, the Darker Eye will be in range of Choice Band Extreme Speed. The one thing that he can switch into this very safely is that Vaporeon which we have the toxic tech for, so we can go ahead and toxic that on the switch and wear it down for Mega Mawile's player off as well as Kieran Black's Fusion Bolt. Then we can maybe go out into Greninja, start getting up those spikes, and really just try to go for game with Mega Mawile late game. So really, besides Vaporeon, this thing is just going to do a ton of work against this team. Great revenge killer against stuff like Diggers V2 because extreme speed out prioritizes the quick attack, of course, and every Pokemon on our team has an attack that can actually put the Diggers be into range of the quick, uh, the extreme speed right here, which is really good for me. And other than that, just dual fire stab. Unfortunately, we actually do not outspeed the uh, Rotom, which I actually did check in between recording the roster and this. That thing does actually have base 91 speed, unlike the other Rotom forms, which all have base 86. That's kind of unfortunate, but we still do have a really nice speed tier for this in terms of outspeeding Diggersby, even if he has an XP Jolly, which he has no reason to do, but this is definitely the speed tier I had to hit right there, and hopefully Entei can be a really nice revenge killer slash a wall breaker in this game, and let's go ahead and move on to our win condition core. Fourth mon we got right here is Mega Mawile, which is our primary win condition this week. We brought the Trick Room set last time, but it really only got to do any work at the end to revenge kill the Diggers be right there, but this time we're bringing it back and hopefully it's my primary win condition. As I did say, we're trying to lure that Jirachi with my Ghost Team Z, Karen Black, and after that thing is gone, player off just claims kills under Trick Room. He doesn't have anything. The one thing that I also am trying to get rid of is the Vaporeon, because they can obviously stall out turns of Trick Room if it has like Wish plus Protect, which could definitely be very annoying right there. And other than that, just Iron Head. I didn't run Iron Head last time, I think I ran Ice Punch. But I think Iron Head's the better option, just to make sure that we don't have to risk missing against like Darkrai and Terrakion, and then knock off plus Sucker Punch. I didn't run Sucker Punch last time either, just because I obviously needed the um, other sort of stab when he had that Kingler. I believe I ran Thunder Punch or something, but yeah, then knock off is just there to pretty much knock off Jirachi's item. If he has Fizz Def Jirachi, he can take one. If he has Cold Berry too, he can take a knock off, but other than that, Jirachi's not taking any sort of hit. And not much else to say right here. Min speed completely. Thankfully, after we T-wave the uh, Jirachi, we still actually do outslow that thing under Trick Room, which is really great, and uh, pretty much we can knock that thing off. So that's the whole thing with Mega Mawile right here, and let's go ahead and move on to our Trick Room setter, which is Necrozma. Second to last Pokemon we got right here is a Mewar Necrozma, which is running pretty much the exact same spread as last week. Trick Room, Photon, Geyser, Thunder Wave, and Stealth Rock. This is our primary Trick Room setter to get in Mega Mawile, and uh, pretty much we can T-Wave something, try to get up Trick Room, and Z knocks me out and then go out into Mega Mawile. Now I do have to keep in mind, Trick Room is a negative priority move, so definitely have to keep that in mind when Thunder Waving around. And then Stealth Rock is right there, just to help chip down his team. As I did say, Stealth Rock will put Mega Pidgeot into range of Greninja's Ice Beam, which could be really cool. And then Thunder Wave is just there to slow down stuff like Darkrai and Mega Pidgeot. Both Darkrai and Mega Pidgeot actually do still get out, still do outspeed Mega Mawile after the uh, Thunder Wave, so he can actually outspeed under Trick Room, which is really good for me. And then, of course, we have the 100 defense right there with the Bold Nature, which is pretty much just there to help me take on a Max Attack Adamant Choice Band Return from Diggersby. And then the rest in just Spit F, just because we didn't really need to hit any other barrier with def the defense stat. Pretty much we can take some sort of like Rocky MZ hit from Terrakion no matter what, as long as he did not SD upload that thing. So that's definitely very great. Primary switch into Terrakion right here, as well as the Clover for Darkrai. But really the primary purpose is the Trick Room for Mega Mawile. Let's go ahead and move on to our last Pokemon this week. And our final Pokemon right here is Champo or Flygon. I was really debating as to what I should put on the team for this last slot right here. And I opted to go with the Choice Scarf Flygon. I was really thinking about running like... Electros with the Assault Vest. I ended up bringing a very bulky Electros last time too with the Coil, and if I did that, I would be bringing the exact same six Pokemon, which I know you would be prepped for a more bulky Electros this time with either Band Terrakion or Band Diggersby, so I opted not to go that route, and I actually brought a more offensive option right here with Choice Scarf Flygon, and the reason for that is I think it's a really good lead against his team. I don't see him anti-leading it with anything like Choice Scarf, HP, Ice, Darkrai, and if he does lead Darkrai, I can always scout by pivoting out into either Kyurem or Greninja. But other than that, Outrage actually has decent sweeping potential right here if we can weaken some stuff. We gotta get rid of Vaporeon, of course, as well as the Jirachi, but we can handle that with Kieran Black. So I figured this would be a cool option, and then it's also our Defogger, just in case we do want to Defog for the Entei, because he does have several Stealth Rockers. I think Jirachi, Jirachi, Terrakion, Jirachion, and uh, Kecleon also get Stealth Rock, so 
And if in case we do see the potential for an extreme speed sweep with Entei, we can go ahead and defog with Flygon right here and get that in safely. But really, I'm probably going to go ahead and lead with this thing, is my mentality right here. And yeah, that's going to be our team. We're going into this match with a 10-1 record, which is really solid. Dom is coming in with Agent 3, which is a very fine record too. And hopefully we can have some fun, but I really do want to try to win right here and move on to the ICBA Season 3 Finals. And let me know what you guys think we're going to win, and let me know what you could have done different with the team, of course, and I'll see you tomorrow for the match. Later.